so glad to see uh, all of you here. I'm sure we can, you know, all of us can come, you know, and um, worship here together in this manner. Uh, we, have, we have the capacity to get all of us to come here. And uh, those who are joining online as well, uh, glad you are joining us uh, today uh, once again. Yeah, and uh, hopefully for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, we hope that this will not be your last time as well. We hope to see you again and again. Do stay connected with us. As you know, uh, that we are online uh, through different means, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and also our church website. So today, uh, let's begin. And I want to begin by calling your attention to think with me for a moment. To think with me for a moment where you are today. Where are you? Where are you personally, relationally, financially? Uh, where are you spiritually or perhaps professionally? And then where you are. The question is, are you happy where you are today? Are you satisfied with the person that you have become today? Are you where you wanted to be? Uh, personally or in your relationally or professionally, spiritually or in your family? Where you are today, is that the best where, where you can be? Where you are today, personally, is that the best person that you can be? Well, some of us, or some of you may say, oh, well, yes, I'm happy where, where I am. You know, I'm happy where I am working at. I'm happy with my relationship, and so on and so forth. Well, the others of you may say, oh, no, not at all. And that's why I am so discouraged. And for some of you, you may have come here today hoping that you will hear something, kind of a direction, kind of some inspiration, kind of a timely word because you don't want to be where you are today or that you don't know where you should be going. And perhaps for those of you who are online, maybe you didn't come or you don't like to come to church anymore because you are kind of upset. With, with, with God, in a sense, where you are today, financially, family-wise, professionally, relationally, you're kind of like, where is God? It's like, this is not what I wanted to be. This is not what I dreamt to be. I thought God said he, he will bring me to the best place. I thought there are so many promises I've been claiming, but I'm not where I am. Supposed to be, or at least, I understand that I'm supposed to be. According to the scriptures. <laughs> Maybe for some of us, you may say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know whether I'm happy. I don't know whether I'm sad. I don't know whether I'm, where I'm, I just don't know where I am. It's like, I'm just confused. I'm lost. Wherever you are today, the question is this, how did you end up where you are today? Whether you are happy, whether you are satisfied or not, whether you want to be somewhere and you are not there, the question is, how did you end up where you are today? How did you end up being who you are today as a person, as a spouse, as children, as parents, as boyfriend, as girlfriend, as singles? Well, you may say, or some of us may say, oh, because it's because of my friends. Because of my family, if only, if only I was brought up in a different set of family, if only I had that job, if only I had that kind of relationship, if only I had that amount of money in my bank account, if only I was as connected as those people, oh, if only I didn't have to go through the circumstances that I went through, the tragedy that I went through. So some of us may say that, you know, it's because of all these factors, the external factors. That's the reason why I am where I am today. But you know, right? I know. 
Let's be honest. Ultimately, ultimately, it was your decision, it was my decision that brought you where you are today. Because let's face it, decisions determine destiny, right? The decisions that you make will determine where you will end up in all areas of life. So imagine with me, imagine the, the regrets that you could have avoided if only you had made better decisions in the past, in some areas of your life, relationally, financially, in your family, or choosing the house, choosing the car, choosing the job. It's like, oh, if only I had said no to that offer. If only I didn't go out with her, with him. If only I didn't go. If only I didn't, you know, just is that... Imagine the regrets that you could have avoided. And I know, let's be honest, we all have regrets, don't we? And the regrets is usually it's like, wow, if I were to live all over again. One of the participants in the Alpha that I conducted in elsewhere, we asked the question, if you could ask God one question, what would that be? And this person said, well, I would ask God, is it possible for me to relive again my life? Listen, is it possible, God, that I could relive my life again with the same memory? And then I asked why. why do, I understand relive your life again, but why with the same memory of your old life? And then, you know, this is what he said. This brother said, oh, so that I will not make mistakes. I will not make those decisions that I made before. You see, all of us want to live, all of us want to live a better life, right? Don't we? We want to live a better life, but for that, we've got to learn to make better decisions. If we want to live a better life, we've got to learn to make better decisions. Better decisions, better life. So I want to talk to you in the next two weeks, this week and next week, about something that I myself am learning. And that is this, making better decisions for better life. That's right. Now, I know, I may not know all of you personally, but I know for sure you want a better life. So that's what I'm learning. And as I learned, I felt that this is something perhaps may benefit every one of you. Because I'm sure at the start of this year, you all are thinking, how am I going to make this year? There are critical decisions that I'm going to make and I am scared. Because for some of you, you have bad experience making decisions on your own. Because you have that kind of impression that, Whoa, I, I just don't want to make any decisions because I have always made a terrible mistake. Or for some of you, you are confused. Because when you go to this person, this person say A. The other person says B. So it's like what to choose? Which one is it? So there are so many things this year, despite the unknown, despite the uncertainty of this COVID that is going around. But well, life goes on, and that means, and even more, with all the uncertainties around, there are critical decisions that we still have to make. The fact that you still, I mean, the fact that you say, no, I don't want to make any decisions, that in itself is making a decision, isn't it? And so I felt that perhaps... Like me, you want to know how to make better decisions in life so that we can have better lives as individuals, as families, as in our professions, in our finances, in our relationship, and so on. So the question, therefore, is how to make better decisions in life. 
how to make better decisions in life so that you have fewer regrets. By the end of this year, that you look back and you would say like you, you can even count because it's just handful. It's like, oh, the regrets is only one, two, three. That's it. Woo! How to make better decisions so that you could be the best of who you can be. You could be the best of where you can be this year. And uh, I don't know about you, but this is my desire. That this year, I want to be the best of me. I want to be the best that I can be. In terms of different areas of my life. So how to make better decisions so that, listen, if you were to live your life all over again, there wouldn't be any change. There wouldn't be really any change about the decisions you make. That as you look back, you know, it's like if I were to live all over again, 2021, I think I would make the same decisions all over again. I will still choose him. I will still choose her. I will still do that job. I will still work hard. I will still go for it. I will still serve. I will still give. I will still love. That if you were to live your life all over again this year, that you would say, you know what? I would make the same decisions. I would still go for it. Wouldn't it be nice? And here's the answer to the question, how, therefore, can we make that kind of decisions? It's very simple, by the way. And for those of you who are Jesus followers, you have been reading your Bible. It's so simple. Here's the answer. Ask God. And do it. That's it. Let's close in prayer for today. Okay, go home, ask God, and do it throughout the week. You know, really, that would suffice for today, actually. But since I prepared, so let me just finish. Okay, what I prepared. (laughs) All right. But simply, really, ask God. Ask God and do whatever He tells you. Ask God and do whatever He reveals to you. In other words, make decisions. Make your decisions according to the revelation of God's will for you. I say that again. Make your decisions according to the revelation of God's will for you, for your life. God's will. Haha. That's right. God's will for your life. And I know if you are Jesus' followers, for those of you who have been walking for quite a bit, God's will, yes. That's a big idea. That's a nice idea, but ah. Not really interested. You know why? Because let's face it. Many of us, as Jesus followers, we have been living our lives all these years without even having to consider what's God's will for my life, right? Now, don't tell me your reasons why you are not interested to know God's will. I know, you may have uh, setbacks and all those experiences that you didn't expect, you didn't want. But by the mere fact that you are a Jesus follower, that I am a Jesus follower, many of us, we are not concerned about God's will for our lives. And that's how we are living because that, that, that that has been the way we live our lives, right? Because let's face it and let's be honest. We make decisions most of the time based on our intuition, right? We make decisions in life based on the research we do. We make decisions based on the experience we had. Or we make decisions based on what others are saying or what others have done. Most of the time. Or I would say, naturally, that's how we make decisions. And that's why many Christians, for many years, you have been Christians, but God's will for my life, mm, maybe for those of us, some of us may be like, (laughs) I mean, I've been Christian for like five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you may be saying like, I still don't get it. I mean, what's God's will? What is this God's will? And for those of you who are new, you 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 may have just started your journey of following Jesus. Or maybe for those of you on site, online, You are not a Jesus follower, but you are tuning in and you are here. We are glad you are here. You know, maybe your friends invited you and all those. We we are glad you are here. 
And you may be thinking like, oh, that's not for me. I know that's what you may be thinking. But hey, listen, because God's will is for everyone. God's will is for everyone. Whether you are a Jesus follower or not, God has a will. God has a plan for every individual. You don't have to be a Jesus follower to have God's will for your life. Isn't that cool? That's the God we have, you know. But what more or more so, you and I, if you are a Jesus follower, God has a will, God has a plan for your life, for your relationship, for your job, for your finances, for everything. So, God's will. I know it's a big topic, you know, because you can, you can attend one whole semester on understanding or exploring on what this God's will is all about. But I learn, and I like to summarize things, or I like to put it in a simple way. So if I were to attempt, okay, it's not exhaustive, but just to give you a, a, an idea, an overview of what is God's will. So if you look in the scriptures, if you read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, there are three categories where God's will can be found. And the three categories are very simple. The first one is called the providential will of God. The providential will of God. Providential, wow, big word, right? But it simply means that providential will of God is that which God is doing in the world. Or in other words, providential will is that which God does it anyway. And you can't do anything about the providential will of God. It's like you, 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 you can't pray against it. Even if you pray against it, God will say, well, I planned it and I'm going to go ahead. So that's the providential will of God. It's a will that no one except God can change his mind. For example, God forming a nation called Israel so that through this nation, Israel, he can show and he can reveal who God is and through this nation, bring up the Savior. That is God's providential will and no one can do anything about it. You can pray and fast whole year long. He is not going to change his mind. For exa- the other example is the coming of Jesus Christ, for example. It's like he planned it even before you and I were created. And so, you cannot stop. You cannot say like, oh, no, 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 God, don't send Jesus Christ. It's like, so poor thing. We don't want to hurt you, your feelings. You just save us. Like, don't, need to let, don't need to let him die. No. God planned it. God will do it. Or in the book of Revelation, it says what? There will be a final judgment when Jesus returns in glory. And the final judgment that we are going to have, every one of us is going to have, whether you are a believer or not, we are going to have a final judgment where we are going to give an account. And that is not because someone prayed or the Israelites prayed, God, you know, when you send your son Jesus Christ back again in the end time, please come and judge us. Please come and allow us to give us accountable, you know, be accountable to what we have done. No, it's not because people have prayed, you have prayed. It's because God designed it that way. That's how God plans it and nobody can do anything about it. But you see, it's quite cool, isn't it? You can do nothing about the providential will of God, but God uses you. God uses me to fulfill the providential will of God. Isn't that cool? It's like, you can do anything about it, but you cannot thwart my plans. Abraham, for the nation of Israel, God chose a mere man called Abraham like you and me. For Jesus to come, to send his son Jesus, he chose a mere woman like you and me, Mary. So you see, providential will of God, God plans it, you can do nothing about it, but God uses you and me to fulfill it. So that's the will, that's the providential will of God. That's In other words, when you look at the providential will of God in the scriptures, you will find patterns. You will find patterns. You will find principles on how God functions, on how God behaves toward us and toward 
the creation. In other words, the providential will of God is where you will know how God works and what God is up to with us and with the world. The second one is called the moral will of God. The moral will of God. The moral will of God, you know that, right? These are the commands of God. These are the commandments of God. For example, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Or if you come in the New Testament, or even you can find in the Old Testament, flee from temptation, flee from all sexual immoralities. Plain, simple, clear, cut. It's like, flee from all sexual immoralities. Like, what, God, what do you mean by that? It's like, duh, it's like so clear. Speak the truth in love. And these commands, you know, sometimes we think that, oh, I thought God is a God of grace. Why all these rules? Why do we need rules? It's like God is so rigid. No, I don't need to illustrate further. Why do we need rules when we drive on road? <laughs> for whose benefit is the rule? It's for us, right? It's for our safety. That's the same principle. If you look at the scriptures and you say, what? So many commands of God. So many rules to live by. Well, the freedom is found in within the boundaries of the life that God has called us to. Once you get out of the boundary, you may think, the world may think, that's called freedom. Well, all the best. You will just end up having lots and lots of regrets. That's why you don't want to make decisions based on the, 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 the circumstances or the view outside the boundaries of God's moral will. But the interesting thing about the moral will of God is that you can choose to obey or you can choose to disobey. The third one, which I think we are most interested in, isn't it? And that's called the personal will of God. The personal will of God for our lives. For example, which school to go, which university, which subject, which to, I mean, what kind of girlfriend or boyfriend to choose? Uh, which job? Who to marry, who not to marry, which house to take, which, how, how, how do I go about with this project? Should I take this project? Should I go out with him, with her? Should I do this, do that? And in the personal will of God, you need the discerning. You need to discern and decide what is God's best for your life. So these are the three wills of God that can be summarized. And I think that's how we can understand how God functions and how we can go about making better decisions so that we have better lives. You see, God is not only interested in communicating His providential and His moral will to us, but He's very interested to reveal, to communicate with us His personal will for our lives. God wants to make His will known to us. I must say that again. Because for some of us, we think that it's so hard to understand. It's so hard to, to know God's will. Why, why, why did God make it so difficult for me to know, to understand His will? Brothers, sisters, my friends, I am sorry to tell you, you are wrong. I am wrong if we are thinking that way. God wants to communicate. God desires that you and I know the personal will of God for our lives on a daily basis. God wants you to choose the best. God wants you to make better decisions every single day of our lives so that we have the best of what God can give to us. And He grieves. The Holy Spirit in us grieves when we make the wrong choice, when we make the wrong decisions in our life. And let's be honest, you know it. There are some decisions that you make, you know it's totally wrong. And come on, you don't have to be Jesus' follower to know that there are some decisions that you make are wrong. You just know it by the mere fact that you are a human being. There are certain sense inbuilt in us about right and wrong. But we choose to do the wrong. And that is the moment the Holy Spirit in us, God grieves. God says, Haya. Why? This is 
is what the scripture tells us. The scripture says, and he will make your path straight. That's right. And he, referring to God, will make your path straight. From Proverbs chapter 3. Do you know the word straight? You know what it means? It simply means this. Clear. Obvious. In other words, God will make your path. God will make your decisions that you are supposed to make clear and so obvious that you cannot miss. You will know at the core of your heart that that's God's will for you. Of course, the challenge is whether you, at the end of the day, will follow and participate in the will of God. But we must understand. But we must understand one thing. God doesn't make His will known to us for our consideration. What do I mean by that? God is not interested to communicate His will, His best for us, so that we were like, oh, oh, that's God's will for my life. Oh, that's God's will for my future husband, future job. Oh, wow, yeah, I needed that. All right, thank God. Thanks God, you know, for, for giving us, I'll, I'll, I'll consider that. I'll put in one of the options. <laughs> no, no, no. When God reveals and when God communicates His will for you, He doesn't want you to put that in your options. He doesn't want you to add on to the list of your options. God doesn't reveal His will, His best for your life, for our consideration, but He reveals, instead He reveals for our participation. That's right. For us to act on it. Because His, his will is the best. If God is God, then come on. You don't have to be so spiritual to know this. Logically, it tells us that He has the best interest for you and me, isn't it? If God is God. So when God reveals to us, He makes known to us His will, His direction, His best for us. He does it not for our consideration, but He does it for our participation, for us to act on it. God reveals His will for our lives so that we can make decisions accordingly. But God doesn't just reveal His will for our lives. God doesn't just like, poof, okay, you want it? It's like earnest praise. It's like, oh God, I don't know after my uni, you know what to do. I don't know what to specialize, you know. And then God, like, oh, okay, boom. It's like, oh, okay, I must go to this place. No. Well, does he do that? Of course. But you see, we may think that God does it that way. And that's where we have to always ask the scripture. We have to always go back to scripture. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's, let's go and familiarize with the providential will of God. How does God work? What, what are the patterns? What are the principles of God working in the lives of human beings? And when you, when you scan through the scriptures hard enough, you will find clues on how God processes with us. It may seem to us that, you know, it may seem to us that uh, the moment you pray for direction, God, I don't know, there are like three exits. One, two, three. Which one? And God says, three. Yes. Wonderful God. We wish, and come on, let's, let's be honest, we want that from God, Right? But this is where we have to be very honest to ourselves. God doesn't play that kind of game. We want to play that game. We just say, God, there are three options, A, B, C. Just point one and I will choose. I will go for it. We like to play that game because we don't want to wait. We don't like the process. We don't like the process of praying, waiting, and hearing, and seeking. We don't like that process. But God is telling you, in case, if some of you are, are doing that, it's like, I have been praying for that, just, just a sign, just a sign. Just God, just God, give me just a sign, just a sign, just a sign. I'm sorry to disappoint you. God doesn't play that game. There is a process to God revealing His will and His best for us. Here it is. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, 
trust in the Lord with all your heart. There you go. There got to be some trust. There got to be a process of trusting God that He has the best interest for our lives. Trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. All. Not just a specific area that you want to choose. It's like, I want to trust God all my heart, with all my heart in this area. But for this one, hiya, no need now. My intuition, my experience, just fang in. No, but, but God wants us to trust in all aspects, in small details even. You know why? Because God is interested in your details. If God has given His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sin, you bet He is interested in your personal, intimate, daily life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust. I mean, come on, you trust someone. You, you, you will always trust someone or something when you make decisions, don't we? We always. Then the question is, why not? Why not? Might as well trust God. Why not? Might as well make God the first person to trust. And then as we do that, as He directs us, then we will see who we can trust among the people that He brings us, right? But we always get the order wrongly, right? Before we pray, before we really go to the Lord, we like to explore things. And we like to ask people. And by the way, if you want to know the will of God in specific areas of your life, I mean, this, this one, you don't, have to you don't have to be that spiritual again to understand. You don't, have to be, you don't have to be a Jesus follower to understand. But if you are looking for some advice, some decision-making uh, kind of a sign for you, don't go and look for people who don't have experience in that area, right? I mean, that's a common sense, right? <laughs> You want to look for someone. You want to get some advice, some recommendation, some advice from people who already have that experience. For example, you, you want a relationship, you, you, you don't want to go and ask for someone who doesn't have any relationship. <laughs> you know what I mean? He or she may have read a lot of books. Oh, I can tell you, like principle number one, two, three, four. Whoa, thank you. You are my savior. You go back, it doesn't work. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work at all, okay? But, but I think in those principles, there are fine lines, there are some explanation, there are some footnoting. And only those who have experience can tell you, yeah, that's the principle, but hey, <clears throat> let me tell you, these are also things to just take note. You trust in the Lord, you will trust someone or something, might as well trust God. And not just hard, half-heartedly, but fully with all your heart. And then there is a contrast in this uh, uh, verse, right? And it says, and lean not on your own understanding. And lean not on your own understanding. Lean, the word lean is a very strong word here. The, 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 the word lean has the idea of putting the whole weight of your decision. Because you're going to make a decision, right? And this word lean has the idea of like, Leaning, putting the whole weight of making your decision. Don't put the whole weight of that decision that you're going to make on your own understanding or on your own intuition. Don't, in other words, don't put your whole weight of making dec your decision based on your understanding, your experience, or your intuition. That they may be good, they may be helpful, and God is not against our intuition our experiences, our, our, our understanding. No, God is not against that. God is simply telling you, you will not get it. You will not get what's best for you from me if you solely, if you put the whole weight of making the decision at the end of the day based on your understanding. Now, God willing, next week, I will talk about why the scripture tells us not to trust, not to put the whole weight on our own understanding or intuition, God willing. So stay tuned and be here again next Sunday. But the scripture tells us, lean not on your own understanding. Instead, the scripture tells us, right? The next verse, the scripture tells us, 
in all your ways. Instead, in all your ways, again, all, not just one area, two areas, three areas, in all areas of your life, submit. Some translation has acknowledge. But if you read the original, the word acknowledge, the word acknowledge, the English word acknowledge is actually uh, a bit weaker in, 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 in the truer uh, sense or the nuance of the original word. So I think the, 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 the stronger word, the, 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 the word that really kind of captures the meaning is submit, which NIV has and the different, there are other translations that have as well. But the idea is submitting to God in all aspects of your life. Surrendering is like bringing everything to that one person that is God himself. It's not just acknowledge, oh, I acknowledge your answer. Oh, okay, okay. No, it's not, it's not that idea, but it's, it's like submitting. It's like, I know I have different options. I know my experience says this, but, but, but wait, wait, wait. I got to bring everything streamlined to that which God actually wants to reveal. And that's called submitting in all your ways. In other words, learn. You and I, we got to learn to bring all the aspects of our lives to God for His direction. You surrender or you submit everything to God. And that means you come to a place. In all your ways, submit to Him. It means coming to a specific place in a place where you say, Look, God, I have different options. I, have, I, I even have preference on who to choose, what to choose, whether to go or not. I have a preference based on my intuition, based on my flesh, and uh, based on what other people are saying. Look, I, that's, that's the situation I am in. But God, I believe that you are indeed God. And that means you have the best interest for me, and I want to therefore ask you, and I want to trust, and I want to make decisions based on your cue, based on the signs that you give me, based on what you tell me to do. Whatever you reveal, I'll go for it. I have different options. I like them, but I don't know. So what I want to be is I want to be at the center of your will. And so whatever your will is, whatever your best for me is, may not be what I'm thinking, may not be what others are saying. It's going to be hard. I may not like that job. I may not like that relationship. I may not like that uh, work. I may not like that atmosphere. I may not like to love, and that's okay. But as long as, God, you are telling me that that's what's best for you, then God Help me to trust and to participate. When you come to that place, that's the meaning of this verse. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Submit to Him. If and when you come to that place, the scripture tells us that's when God will make His will. God will make His best known to you and to me because the scripture tells us, and He, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, verse, verse 6, 3, verse 6, He will make your path straight. When you trust, when you come to a place, I want that. I think they are right. But God, I want to participate what you have for me. I will not like it if it is not that one. So God, you have to help me. I want to be in that place. That's the moment when God will reveal, when God will make your paths straight. God is saying, when you come to that place of surrender and total submission and willing to take it and participate, God is saying, I will make it so clear and so obvious for you that you will never miss it. You will never have to guess, is this the job that God wants me to do? Is this the relationship that God wants me to be? Is this that? You can name it. Of course, some of you may say, oh, I thought God just allows us to choose whoever we want to. 
whether we want to eat mango or apple, it's up to us. That's right, it's true. But don't you think if God can send His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, He is definitely interested in every single decision we make. And He wants the best for us. But do you know what it means? Do you know what this means? It means this as well. That sometimes when we pray for God's will and God's direction, He doesn't seem to reveal, right? He doesn't seem to show us His will and His best for us because for some of you, it will be because you are not ready. Because as you pray, I mean, you, some of you may be thinking, especially if you are a Jesus follower, or if you, even if you're not a Jesus follower, if you have ever prayed to Jesus and like, oh, I want, you know, God help me, help me. I want to know your will. I want to know your will. You may be praying that, but at the back of your heart and at the desire of your heart, actually, you already made up your mind what you want. And actually, you wish that God will say yes to that desire, to that direction that you are looking for. And when that happens, my brothers and sisters, my friends, God ain't going to show up. Because God said, you've got to trust first. You've got to learn to come to a place of total surrender. But even if I don't like it, God, you've got to help me. Show me. Because He will show you only when you are ready. When you are willing to say whatever that is you are god i will trust you he may not reveal to you even if you pray because you are not ready we are not ready and willing to follow and participate in his will god reveals his will and his direction for our participation not consideration we got to know that. And I hope you remember this. God reveals His will, His direction, His best for us. Not for our consideration, but for our participation. And that's why God may reveal His will, His best for our lives only when we are ready and willing to participate in where God is leading us. So the question is, then how can, how can we come to that place? How can we come to that place of readiness? How can we come to the place of willingness to participate in God's will no matter, no matter what? No matter if that is something that you don't like. How can we come to that place? Very simple. There are two ways, let me tell you. The first one is know the character of God. The second one is obey the commands of God. That's right. Know the character of God and obey the commands of God. Know the character of God. Know how God works. Know who God is. Know the virtues, the principles of God. Know the patterns of God. In other words, know the providential will of God. Know the character of God means know the, the, the providential will of God, how He works. And you find that in scriptures. When, God, when, when people behave in this way, how does God respond? Ah, that's a clue there. So know the character of God, how God works, and what God is up to in this world. That's very important. The second is obey the commands of God. God has already revealed His moral will. I mean, you and I cannot. We, are, we will never be ready to obey His, His will for our personal life if we are not already exercising obedience of those revealed will of God in our lives or for our lives. And that's why it's very important you know the character of God. And that's why you can trust God. And then you obey the commands of God, the moral will of God. When you can trust God, you will be more willing to obey His revealed will of God. Speak the truth with love. Love one another. Forgive one another. These are the known will of God. And when, when, you, when you know the character of God and when you start begin to obey the commands of God, what happens? The result is this. As you begin to know the character of God or the providential will of God, you will begin to trust God. You will begin to trust God with all your heart. 
That's what the Proverbs is saying. Because of who God is. Because of His character. And as you begin to obey the moral will of God, what happens is that you and I will begin to submit all our ways to Him. Because we can trust Him. And when you are already obeying His revealed of a will of God, it becomes much easier for you and I to follow His will for our personal lives. And that's, an, that's when uh, God will make known His personal will for your life. And that's when God will make your path straight. So obvious and so clear that you cannot miss His direction for your life. So please, brothers and sisters, know this, understand this. You cannot expect to know God's will without knowing who God is. His character. You cannot expect to do His will without having already obeying the commands that He has already revealed. So God is simply saying this. Know me. Know me. You will know my will. Obey me and you will be ready to participate in the will, in my will for your personal life. That's what God is saying. That's why trust in me because of who I am, providential will. In all your ways, submit to me and follow by following and obeying what I have already revealed for you, the moral view, and I will reveal and you will be ready to follow and participate. You see, our goal of knowing the will of God is what? What is the goal of our, what is, what is our goal of knowing God's will? Our goal is to know God's will. That's right. We want to know God's will for our personal life, our relationship, professional, uh, uh, finance, relationships, uh, uh, spiritual, spiritually, so and so forth. The goal for us is to know God's will for our lives. But do you know God has a different goal in revealing His will for us? You may have not thought of that, but let me tell you. You know what is God's goal? in revealing His will for us, God's goal is to make us know Him. That's right. In the process of revealing His will, in the process of revealing His best for your life, for your personal life, we get to, you get to know Him personally and intimately. That is God's goal. Not, not to say that God is not interested to really reveal His will for our lives. He is so much interested. But more than that, He is even more interested in letting you and me get to know Him even more up and close. Want to know what's God's best for you? Then know God in the best possible way you can. In the meantime, take this time or this week to follow through and see what God has. And I will see you next Sunday. But before I close, let me just invite you to spend this time to respond. It is not what you hear that will make a difference for your life. It is what you ultimately will decide to do based on what you hear that will make a difference for your life this week. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads with me? God wants to reveal His will and His best for you. God the Father sacrificed His Son, Jesus, to communicate His love for us. So my brothers and sisters, my friends, you can bet your life that He is interested in you in every aspect of your life. Jesus sacrificed His life for you. So He is for you. You can trust Him for God's best and God's will for your life. Now, at this time, I'll give you a few seconds. And I want you to answer this question. What will you do this week? This week, what will you do in response to the message today? I'll give you a few seconds and see how the Spirit leads you. Take some action plan. Take some 
action for this week to see your life change. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding us that you love us again, that you want to reveal, you want to communicate what's best for our personal life. Thank you for that assurance and reminder. And so this week, as all of us continue to chew and learn and take one action plan, one action step for this week to apply what we have heard, Holy Spirit, would you enable each one of us to trust you and to apply what we have heard according to where we are. For some of us, perhaps, they need to go back to the scripture. For some of them, they need to really come face to face about their struggle and about their desire, what they personally want, but which is in contrary to what is best for you. So whatever that is, for those of us who are struggling to make decisions, in some areas of our lives. Would you, Lord, this week, help them open their eyes, open their hearts and their minds to trust in you with all their heart, not to lean on their own understanding, intuition, or experiences, but in all their ways that they will come to the place of total surrender to say that whatever your will is, whatever your best for me is, I may not like it and I will not like it, but help me, O God. Bring all of us to that place so that we will hear you say, communicate to us what your will, your best for us. So would you lead us throughout this week in a journey of discovering and knowing, and making better decisions in life so that we have a better life that glorifies you and that is for the good of every one of us. So thank you for hearing our prayers. We ask this in Jesus' name.